Excellency uh, for Nyasimbe, President of the Republic of Togo, Excellency Sarawak Zewed, President of the Federal Republic, Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, Excellency Felix Shisekedi Chilombo, President of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Excellency Amadou Gon Koulibaly, Prime Minister of the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire, Ami Ben Yamed, President of the Africa CEO Forum, Honorable Ministers, Senior Officials, uh, Philip Leroux, CEO of International Finance Corporation, Africa's CEOs and business executives, representatives of regional international organizations, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure for me and for all Rwandans to welcome you all to Kigali for this year's edition of the Africa CEO Forum. We are honored by the presence of many national leaders, business leaders, and delegations from every corner of our continent and beyond. Allow me to extend a very special welcome to the heads of state and government who have joined us. Excellencies, you're most welcome. I wish to thank our partners the Jeanne Afrique Group for selecting Rwanda and allowing us to host this forum and for the hard work that has gone into organizing the event. One year ago, in this very room, 44 countries signed onto the African continental free trade area. And more have done so since, just and just as importantly, the protocol on the free movement of persons was also adopted. The continental free trade area is on the cusp of coming into force I understand that only one more ratification is needed. However, as we all know, this is where the hard work begins. It is very timely for us to gather here today to discuss how to make the most out of this historic agreement among other important issues. We only reach this point because Africa came together with a strong unity of purpose that is rooted in the rising aspirations of our young people for a better future. That same spirit should drive us forward to success. Whatever we try to do, even in terms of economic development, the result comes back to the politics surrounding it. If it's bad, everything else is bad, meaning politics. That is why open, responsive, and accountable governance is so critical. We therefore need the urgency and focus that only the private sector 
can provide with its unique ability to envision new opportunities on the horizon and seize them. However, no one should be satisfied with business as usual. This is the right time for private sector leaders to reflect on what needs to be changed and improved on their end as well, so that we have a situation where, be it the private sector or public sector, we challenge one another, we push one another to make more progress. The implementation of the African continental free trade area, especially at a national level, will require constant dialogue and flexibility, the full involvement of the African business community is critical to keep us on track. In less than a generation, it is projected that Africa will have the world's biggest workforce. I'm sure you have heard this many times. That means 1.1 billion working age Africans, which is more than China or India. We don't have any time to waste to do what is necessary so that this statistic becomes Africa's greatest asset rather than a burden for our continent, and the world. It is our responsibility to ensure that deeper integration translates into prosperity and well-being for Africa's people. For one thing, half of those one billion people will be women. So, long as women face unnecessary obstacles in using their talent to the full, we are all going to continue paying a heavy price in terms of lost wealth. Overall, <laughs> overall what we need is much more business activity above all with each other, so that we see the emergence of global African farms with continental scope and scale, and also impact which champion the interests and ambitions, ambitions of our people. The public and private sectors must work even more closely together to provide the education and the training that will equip Africa's young workers with the skills to excel in manufacturing, services, and technology. Africa will soon be the biggest on some measures. Africa also be among the best. Our continent must aim to compete on quality, not just on cost. The key factor in all of this is a mindset. Is mindset change expensive? I don't think so. It might be difficult, but it is not very expensive. We can be able to affect it. It has no price, yet nothing has greater value than mindset. Knowing and sharing the examples of those who have succeeded in Africa will help illuminate 
the path. Above all, encouraging cooperation. Working together to make a triumph of the continental free trade area and the free movement of persons is therefore of the very highest consequence for Africa's future. Let me conclude by once again welcoming you all and wishing you productive discussions and a very enjoyable stay in Rwanda. I thank you for your kind attention and I look forward to interacting with you in the next sessions. Thank you very much.